Hello everyone. In today's film, I'm going to be creating a look for you which is very much inspired by Instagram makeup. And I shall certainly be interpreting that style. I would definitely say that Instagram makeup tends to be very full on. There's a lot of eye, there's a lot of eyebrow, there's a lot of foundation, contour, shimmer, lipstick, everything. There's a lot of everything. I certainly have slight ambivalence about creating this look for you here today because it is not a look that is that foreign to me. This style of makeup is definitely the kind of style of makeup for which that I used to wear and enjoy wearing when I was a lot younger. Suddenly when I lived in the city of Glasgow, which is in Scotland, I lived there for two years, and I used to wear this sort of style of makeup almost every day. I'd be very, very glamorous, very made up. And that's how I like to look at the time. So I'm almost recreating one of the looks from that period of my own life, which I would consider very similar to the styles of makeup for which that you see on Instagram. So it's very nostalgic for me to be creating this kind of look for you here today. But nonetheless, I'm very excited. So I style my hair in the ways that I used to when I was younger. I'm also wearing one of my favorite black dresses from that period. I haven't actually worn this particular dress since New Year 2012-2013, as it is an asymmetric dress that is draped at the shoulder, but it is very bodycon. I think I stopped wearing this dress because my own skin, of course, is very, very fair. And this dress, of course, is jet black. And even though it is draped at the shoulder and bodycon, it can actually look quite boxy. So when wearing it, I do tend to find that I resemble an oversized piece of sushi, but I absolutely adore it regardless. And I've also replicated one of my favoritely worn hairstyles from that period, which was a black ponytail, the hair scraped back and a slight quiff on the top, as I do tend to find that hairstyles with height are most suiting on me and my features. So I've already gone in and corrected my hairline and applied moisturizer. Today I used some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Carbon, which is a jet black, just to fill in some of the areas of my hairline, which are slightly misshapen and a little wonky. My actual hairline, when my hair is scraped back and pulled back, it almost moves position. It goes from being sort of straight to almost being shaped like a V. And I do tend to find that this makes me look a little bit like a hammerhead shark. They always look very dubious. They're sort of puzzled and shocked by existence itself. So we're filling in the hairline just as a slightly, it just brings everything into proportion and balances everything out. And for moisturizer, which will also serve as our primer today, I have gone in with some of Embryoli's La Creme Concentrate, my trusted favorite. And I applied a liberal amount of that all over the face and slightly onto the neck. So the first thing I'm going to do is color correct my under eye dark circles. Sending them back to the abyss, I am taking some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D1W. Very trusted favorite of mine when color correcting the blueness underneath one's eyes. And I'm applying it with a Charles Fox 8146405 brush. So I'm applying a little bit of it to the chin as I always have paranoia of five o'clock shadow. I'm just taking it through the eyebrows as they create a slight cast on the skin and then concealing any other unfortunate events. Now I'm just buffing the edges and just correcting the position and the texture of that concealer with a Zova 227V brush. This is the synthetic edition of this brush. I know that they also do a natural fiber version, which does not have the V or the specification of being synthetic as I believe it is made from a goat. And then for the larger areas, I'm then taking a Zova 102 brush just to correct its position. Now for foundation, it is my desideratum to achieve a very full coverage, flawless base today. So I want to go in with a foundation that is quite full coverage and long wearing. And I'm going to employ the use of my very favorite foundation mix. And today I'm taking Elamasca Skin Base in the shade 01, which is the white. And then I'm taking Estee Lauder's Double Wear Foundation in the shade 1 C1 shell. Now, I always like to mix foundations on some sort of dish. I don't really like to use the back of my hand as it's a little bit pedestrian. Slap it on and hope for the best. Now, it may appear as if though it is slightly too light for my skin tone, but once it is blended in, set, and the double wear oxidizes, it will darken in time. Even white foundations oxidize on me just to be mean. Then I'm going back in with a Zova 102 brush from before, and I'm just stippling all of that into place. You can use a beauty blender if you wish. Certainly when I look at Instagram, I see a lot of people using a beauty blender to do this. Now, I don't really use beauty blenders as I've said before. I just find them very modern. I'm still fathoming the telegram. Then for additional coverage in areas that require, I'm applying some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade 
D707, because I do tend to find that it's the only thing that really sticks to my concord of a nose. And just to make sure that everything is seamless, I'm going back in with our Zoba 102 brush as well as our Zoba 227, just to simply ensure seamlessness. So with the foundation and the concealer now applied, I'm now going to go in and set it all through with some loose powder. And today I'm going to be going in with one of my trusted favourites, Cryolan's Loose Transparent Powder in the shade TL3. Now one style I definitely see a lot on Instagram, and Instagram makeup of course is baking, when they apply a great amount of powder to the sides of the nose and underneath the eye. This technique can be marvellous and it can make that area look fantastic. But today I'm just going to set everything through thoroughly. I don't tend to bake my under eye area. I don't tend to find that it makes that much of a difference or an impact on me personally. And I'm just setting the under eye area with that powder on a MAC 217. And then I'm just stippling the powder onto the rest of the face using a Real Techniques Multitasker brush. Now I just pack the powder on because I want my skin to look like plaster, ready for guilt. I powder the ears just ever so slightly. I've never really liked shiny ears. I think shiny ears are great, but they belong on the shiny show. Now with the face fully set, I'm now going to move on to eyebrows, as I am starting to slightly resemble Spock from Star Trek. Now because I have powdered the eyebrow region so severely, it is best for me to go in with a cream product. It will definitely adhere better. So to stencil out an eyebrow shape, I'm going to take some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D40, a classic favourite of mine, and I'm going to be just applying that just to create an outline first of all, then I shall go in with powder product on top. And I'm going to be doing the brows quite strong today, and quite high. Now I find with Instagram eyebrows, they do tend to be really harsh on the outside and really perfect and sharp, not very natural looking, but at the inner part of the eyebrow, they do tend to feather and soften slightly, just to appear more natural, I trust would be the intention. Eyebrows do tend to look a lot more flattering, certainly if they are artificial, when they are softer in the center, it doesn't look so severe against the rest of the face. And I'm just quite crudely creating a stencil and a sketch as our base. With the overall brow shape now sketched in and applied, I'm now going to go in and apply individual little strokes with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete. And to do so, I'm using the same MAC 263. And I'm just taking the brush and I'm using it on its side. So with the eyebrows now complete, I'm now going to go in and begin on the eyes. And I'm going to be creating a very full-on warm toned eye today with very full-on lashes and cat eyeliner. So to begin the eyes, I'm going to be taking Urban Decay powder eyeshadow in the shade Naked from the Naked palette. And I'm applying this with a MAC 217. This shall just serve as our transition colour. I'm just going to pull it upward and outward, winging it slightly. And I'm sculpting the eye, creating more shape and definition. And it's really just about building up in slight small layers. Now because the eyelashes and the overall eye makeup is going to be quite full on and quite large, I am going to be extending and exaggerating the eyeshadow today. And then going in with a clean Zova 228 brush just to gradiate the colour and ensure seamlessness. And with the same naked colour I'm applying it to the underneath of the eye on a clean Inglot 80 HPS brush. I'm taking it quite far into the inner corner. And I'm just going back in with our 217 for which that we use to apply the naked colour to the socket and just connecting the two round like so. Both the top and the bottom merge together. Now to further define and intensify that shape, I'm going to be using the same brush, the same MAC 217, but going in with a far deeper tone from the same Urban Decay Naked palette. I shall be taking powder eyeshadow in the shade Buck, which is a slightly darker version of Naked. I'm just going to be applying that to the outer part of the eye first of all and onto the lid ever so slightly, just onto a bit halfway onto the lid. And then with a clean 217, I'm just blending the edges and sweeping over everything just to ensure seamlessness. And then with our Inglot 80 HPS brush from before, I'm just applying a little bit of it to the lower part of the eye and connecting it round to the top and smudging it along the upper lash line. So I further went in and intensified the eye 
on the underneath and through the socket with that buck color. Now, even though the eyes look quite full on and the eyeshadow looks huge in terms of scale, once the black liner has gone on as well as the eyelashes, it will actually look quite diminutive next to the eyelashes as well as the eyeliner. And I'm just going back in with a 217 just to soften the edges. And to now further intensify the eye, I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Purge Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso. And I'm packing that into the outer corner on a Zova 231 brush. Now I don't really want to take it through the socket, I just want to kind of take it across the actual eyelid itself. And then going in with a 217 from before and just softening everything. I just wanted to add a little bit more intensity before I go in and line the eyes. And to highlight the inner corner, I'm going to be going in with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Retrospect. And I'm applying that with a clean Inglot 80 HPS brush. Now it hasn't given me the intensity of shine and brightness for which that I desire. So to further intensify the sheen, I'm going to be going in with some of the Balm's Mary Luminizer, which is very similar to Retrospect slightly darker and a lot warmer. When I highlight the inner corner, I don't tend to do it spotted in one area. I do sort of move it around and I build it up gradually so that we can make sure it is seamless. And I'm just tilting my head back just ever so slightly so that I can apply the highlighter and see where I'm putting it. Taking it onto the lid just ever so slightly. And then going in with a Zoba 227 brush, buffing the edges of it just to make sure that everything blends perfectly together. And I shall present the recommendation that it is always a good idea to look at yourself in a distance from a mirror. Tilt your head back, look from side to side, as well as tilting your head down and looking from side to side. That way you really establish what needs to be corrected, what needs to be changed and what needs to be added. It's very useful for finding flaws for which you might not have seen straight on. Now I'm going to go in and apply a shimmer tone to the eyelid itself. And I'm going to be applying a powder eyeshadow in the shade Smog from the Urban Decay Naked Palette. Now I tend to find that once you've gone in and applied a lot of powder to the eyelids, and what I mean by powder is powder eyeshadows that are matte, when you try to go in with a shimmer tone, it sometimes doesn't adhere as well if you're applying it directly onto a glue or onto a concealer or onto an eye base. I am not going to be applying any of those today. What I'm actually going to do is take it on my finger and just rub it across the eyelid. And that you can see actually gives quite a strong color payoff. And then just buffing the edges of that and ensuring seamlessness, going back in with our 217 and just blurring the edges of it. And I tend to find that when you blend metallic shades, and certainly in this case, once you've applied metallics to a very dry surface, they don't adhere as well as they do to something that is more damp or lubricated. So when you blend the edges, a lot of the eyeshadow shall deteriorate from the eye and you might get a lot of fall down. So what I like to do is go back in with my finger and just intensify even further. Everybody loves a finger. Now to complete the eyes, I'm going to go in and line the lower waterline as well as the upper waterline using MAC Cosmetics Power Point Eye Pencil in the shade Engraved, which is an absolutely beautiful dashing black. And I'm applying that to the lower waterline, first of all, and taking it right into the inner corner and along the upper waterline. So with both waterlines now lined, I'm now going to go in and draw a very cat-like eyeliner, very graphic cat liner. That'll be very pointed in the inner corner and very exaggerated and long at the outer corner. And I shall be using some of the Inglot AMC Gel Eyeliner in the shade 77, which is this absolutely beautiful luminous black color. I shall definitely have to produce a how to draw cat eyeliner tutorial at a later date. I'm going to go in and curl my eyelashes with some of Inglot's eyelash curlers. And with the eyelashes now curled, I'm now going to go in and apply some mascara. Today I'm going to be using my very trusted favorite mascara, the Balm's What's Your Type mascara in the shade black. And I just want to blacken the eyelashes. I'm not really that bothered about definition as I am going to be applying bat wings for eyelashes. And then taking the same mascara but on a MAC Cosmetics lash brush and just applying it to the outer lashes on the lower lashes. So with the mascara applied and now drying, I'm now going to go in and apply false eyelashes. And today I'm going to be using the Eyelure number 140s. And once removed from their box, this is what they look like. These are a classic old favorite of mine. I used to wear these all the time. And I shall be gluing these into place with some of the Duo Adhesive Glue. No, I had forgotten just how large these eyelashes are. They almost totally engulf the look. Now, because the eyelashes are, of course, so massive, I do feel that the underneath just needs a little bit more definition. So I'm going to be taking some of our espresso color from earlier and applying that to the lower lash line 
on a Charles Fox 8146031 brush. And it's really just to soften the harshness of the black liner. And to soften the liner even further, I'm then going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Carbon, which we used before, on a NARS number no. 2 brush. And I'm just pushing that into the lower lash line, smudging it and smoking it in. This is a great step when you've applied gel eyeliner or cold pencil, just for almost making that seem really smoky. You can just go in and apply a little bit of eyeshadow and it just makes it softer. Now certainly the styles of makeup for which that we see on Instagram are notorious for contouring in excess. Now I want to go in with a really warm tone of contour today, but I'm only going to apply it subtly and subtle blusher, but then a lot of highlighter. So to contour, I'm going to be going in with some of Cryolan's powder eyeshadow in the shade Sahara. I use this in a lot of my films. I absolutely love this one. I want a very warm looking contour. And I'm applying that on a crown brush, S205 pointed blush brush. The way that I like to apply contour is just to stipple it on. And I just follow my own natural cheekbones. And once you've stippled it on and really understand where you're plotting the color, then you can apply it quite heavily, if that's what you wish. For a blusher, I'm going to be going in with a classic favorite of mine, which is MAC Cosmetics Powder Blusher in the shade Blush Baby, which is this absolutely beautiful, warm tone. Now, with a lot of styles that we see on Instagram, I don't necessarily see a lot of blusher, not that often, but I definitely see a great amount of contour. Blusher is more subtle, strangely enough. Now to highlight, I'm going to be going in with some of Supercover's White Sheen. Just buffing that on. And I'm just applying a little bit of that underneath the brow as our highlight. Now on Instagram, they love the powder highlighter. So I'm going to be applying a lot more of it. Now I'm just taking a little bit of it down the center of the nose and quite a bit of it at the bridge of the nose. I think that just brings that area forward. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that through the forehead, a little bit of it on the chin, a little bit of it on the cupid bow. Now for lips. Within the makeup styles for which that we see on Instagram, overdrawn lips, big lips, matte lips, lips are pronounced, everything is pronounced, but certainly lips are very pronounced. And a lot of the styles for which that we see are quite 90s, which I love. And of course, I'm very fond of overdrawing my lips. So I'm going to go in first of all and just apply lip liner. I will be overdrawing my lip quite substantially. I shall also be correcting any asymmetry within the lips and filling in the lips just ever so slightly. I actually quite like the natural lip color for which that I have. So I will be allowing it to remain slightly to line the lips I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Lip Liner in the shade Spice. Just start to line the lip. I do tend to start on my bottom lip, first of all. It's, it's much easier because I don't really have to do that much intricate overdrawing. It's as swollen as jabber. And then begin the top lip. I'm just filling in the lips. So I have overdrawn the lips and filled them in totally with that Spice Lip Pencil. Lip liner, of course, is marvelous. You can just draw on a new life. So now I'm going to go in and apply a little bit of lipstick. And today I'm going to be taking some of Sleek Makeup Lipstick in the shade Liqueur. I'm just applying it directly from the bullet onto the lips. I absolutely love this color. It's a little bit like Jubilee by MAC Cosmetics, but it has a slight golden sheen through it. And it's a slightly more opaque than Jubilee. So that more or less completes the look. But there's one last little step. Certainly whenever I have limbs on show, I like to make sure that they are glowing. And of course, when you are a goddess, it's very important that you are glowing. So I always like to apply a little bit of shimmer just along the collarbone. And I'm just going back in with our white sheen from before. I always apply a huge amount of shimmer on the shoulder. And always remember to do the back of the shoulder as well. And of course the arms. I always like to put a little bit of it in the hollow there. And along these two muscles here, doing the side of the brush so I can be more specific. As I have said before, some people like to be glowing for the gods. I like to be glowing greater than the gods. So that more or less completes the look. I had a lot of fun creating this look for you here today. And even though I had slightly ambivalent feelings to begin with, I am very happy that I created this look and recreated a part of my own past, as well as interpreting modern day Instagram makeup looks. And I thoroughly hope that you found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care. Bye.